Game Breaker TV. Hello, everybody, and welcome to After Dark. This is November 27th, and this is the show where you guys call in and we answer your questions live right here, unedited, every Tuesday night. So, joining us this week, like he does every week, from tankspot.com, also host of Legendary PST Weekly Marmot on tap, just the tip, and probably 18 million other shows in the works. It's Mr. Josh Allen, aka Lore. Hey! Oh! Hey! Hi! How are you? I'm good. Good. I didn't see you there! Did you not? <laughs> well, for people seeing people somewhere, I think Darnell's been found. Nope. Darnell, your hiding spot is, as you said before, compromised. I don't think it's gonna keep working. You've, you're gonna have to move. Yeah, um... Wait, is that the new... is that the new... Hey, 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 is that a druid? What's up? What's that tree over there? That, that that new thing for the for the tree, the druids and stuff? They turned the damn with a good ass tree. I didn't know they made them there. That's a good ass tree. I thought that was that art. That, that, that tree wasn't there before, right? That was that's a that that druid. tree. Come on. That druid art's uh, gotten pretty good. Gotta say. Got Christmas to say. Druid. Christmas druid. There's a lobster Christmas over there. Druid. There needs to be a Christmas a tree for him. There, there does, especially happen. coming into the holidays. What are they thinking? That could be glyph. Stuff on? my presents straight up your ass. <laughs> the hell? Damn, what the, <laughs> what the hell? All right. <laughs> well, this is a live call-in show, so let's throw it right out to the callers. we got a lot on the line here today. Caller, you're on the line with Game Breaker After Dark. Tell us your name, tell us where you're from, and tell us your question. Oh, the tree went away. Uh, anyway, uh, hi, it's Adrian again. Uh, uh, so my question is, how do you think Planet Side 2 will perform in the coming months? And more specifically, do you think it will retain a decent MMO size player base? So Planet Side 2, have you guys gotten a chance to jump in at all? I uh, I've actually just recently gotten acquainted with Planet Side 2. Yeah, I, I kind of spent a whole lot of money in that game already. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna throw it out there, you know. I mean, I just, you know, they're like, oh, you got this little blue flash, little four wheeler, and I was like, oh, okay, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and check that out. And they're like, oh, you get a little dangly ball for the back end, for the antennas and stuff, and some rims and some tires and all kinds of crazy stuff, and I can't stop spending my money on it. Are, are you saying that you you put you put truck nuts on your flash? Did you you put? I, yeah. All right, I didn't know. I didn't know they had those in Planet Side. So is it safe to say yeah, we can expect it, some? Uh, can we can we expect some Darnell Let's Plays in Planet Side? Because that'd be crazy. Because that's that's actually well, that's another question. We'll get to that in a second. Actually, no, I ain't no dumbasses <laughs> that are out there playing that stupid ass game. Come on, that ain't me. People are just like, oh yeah, this is like Darnell with that, but with a German accent. Come on, Come on try a, try a German down. accent on, for us. Try a German accent. Nothing. Can you not get it out? Do you need your lower jaw for the German accent? Is that the trick? I don't even know what I'm supposed to do. Oh. oh yeah, there we go. There we go. Um, is das eine Katze oder ist das ein Fach? It's Josh. It's Josh. There you go. There you go. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I don't know no damn German. Come on. So I know right. now why you cry. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. See. Yeah. Oh, what's up? That was. That's the only German how you know that. <laughs> Alright, so so thoughts on Planet Side 2. Here's here's my thing with it. Um I've only had uh an experience of jumping in with one or two other people that um are are new to the game as well. And we we were kind of overwhelmed by everything that uh that we had to do. That caused a problem for the people that I was playing with. Within about 10 minutes, they wanted to quit. So I think that's going to cause a problem for the longevity in terms of how long people want to play Planet Side 2, just because the people who jump in and, and get involved in it don't maybe understand as much as they need to 
uh, right off the bat, and and it misses that 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 pop in, and you're like, oh, this is this is amazing, this is great, like right off the bat. That being said, the- I've heard a lot of really good things, and I and I'm 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 planning on on jumping in with with people who know what they're doing and kind of working together because that's that's where I've heard it really gets fun and crazy and addictive. Um, and and I think that if they could, if if, if players get in and get to a, get a chance to experience that, I think they'll be fine. I mean, you you jumped in and then you are like, but bang, bang, pow. You see, I, I can't do the gun thing because we don't have guns anymore in World Warcraft. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, you went in and you were like, well, pow, 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 you like that, bang. And you're like, damn, this is complicated. And what, I, I've i played shooters I before. before. It's not that it's, There's got to be a guide out there somewhere that tells me what I got to do. It's not that it's complicated. It's just that it, it, it felt, I, when I jumped in, I had no placement to what was going on. I didn't know why I had to really defend. I felt overwhelmed by by massive menus and and granted it was my fault because i just didn't want to read the help guides um but i wanted to jump in and and just start playing and go do something so it's a little bit of add on my part that caused the issue um but i feel like certain mmo players myself included and the ones that i was playing with are able to jump into something like world of warcraft star wars the old republic and jump on the ground floor and and kind of get get themselves up and running uh, well, hold a, on a little bit have you played it since it launched? Can you, have you played it since it came out, launched officially? No, I, I actually started about uh, a week ago. Oh my god, they changed everything! God, oh man, how are we gonna play? Oh. Come out. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying I think that's that's going to be their their struggle to hold the MMO players. Is that people? myself I'll, i'm just gonna use myself an example i jumped in and and felt overwhelmed and confused at what my goals were and where i was trying to go with it and i i can't be the only one out there that's felt that there's a little bit of early learning curve i mean it's mostly just come, like especially if you're playing solo everything seems to be fine if you're playing with other people because you can ask them questions and stuff and funny how that works out in the MMO FPS. You should probably be playing with other people. But most of the early learning curve, uh, it's either stuff that I've just slowly been figuring out myself, like learning, okay, so I can't just go in there gung-ho with an SMG. I have to be tactical about things. Crazy. Uh, I can't just run in there all Call of Duty style, like, I'm gonna shoot everybody! Um, and things like learning to follow the Zerg around, looking at your map to figure out where other people are and going and reinforcing them instead of just running off and doing your own thing. Uh, other than that, though, I haven't felt like there's a huge learning curve beyond that. It all seems pretty... Uh, maybe this is just because I don't mind poking around in menus to learn stuff, but it all seems pretty pretty straightforward to me. It's just a question of, oh, I do stuff, and then I level up, and then I unlock certs, and I, I get more things, and... I can try things out if I want, and as long as I'm following the Zerg around, I'm fine. How do you feel about the idea, the the other thing that the people I was playing with, when we were looking at it, and we were, were kind of deciding, all right, what faction are we going to go, and, and what classes we were going to play, maybe we write into to factions being too close, like, or, or, or classes being too close to classes like we were expecting in MMOs, because when I jumped in and realized that I could switch my, my class mid-battle, that's a great thing for a FPS. You need that versatility to change based on the circumstances. But to me, it I, I felt a little disconnected from the character that I was playing because I wasn't working on like one. I didn't build one class to be really good. Um, I just kind of got to pick and choose, you know, either being a medic or either being a sniper or, or being a heavy assault. How do you guys think that well, that sticks for the player? Anybody right now who is playing Planet Side 2 and going like, okay, I'm only an infiltrator and that's all I'm ever going to do, or I'm only a Sunderer driver and that's all I'm ever going to do, or I'm only a pilot, that's all I'm ever going to do, is kind of playing the game wrong. Even in situations where you're in like an organized platoon and everything, where everything is organized and you'll probably end up spending more time doing one thing than anything else, because, you know, you're organizing each other. So you're like, okay, we've got, I'm the infiltrator, I'm going to sit up over here. There's still going to be situations where you want to switch into a different loadout. Like, even if it's just on the fly for half a second, like, oh, we're trying to set up our Sunderer over here, uh, but there's a tank. So, real quick, we'll all switch over into heavy, we'll shoot a couple rockets at it, and boom, we're done at this point. I can go back to Sunderer at that point. I think the bait, and and that doesn't necessarily mean you have to spread out all your certs and everything. You can still specialize into one thing, but you are still going to want to jump into other setups from time to time. Because even the basic, like, heavy assault setup is still good at killing tanks. Even the basic uh, infiltrator is still good at sniping. There's, it, you can specialize and become better at those things. But in the situations where you really need 
this particular setup right now, it's all right to just say, all right, well, I'm, I'll, I'll just spawn a tank because we need a tank right now and everybody else's tank is on cooldown or they don't have the, the mats for it or something. Resources, excuse me. Wrong I just can't believe that's a thing. I can't believe you get into a damn FPS and you're like, damn, this game is complicated. <laughs> it's like, it even, it even, even changes when you aren't first that complicated. Game. <laughs> the, the, all I'm saying is when you first get in the game now, go download it, damn it, it's just like two minutes, especially with your mega internet connection over there. Download it, make an account, get in there, then all you gotta do is you you click on whatever class you want, not the dudes with the purple tights. Then you're gonna go ahead and what it does, you make a new character and then it plays a, plays a video and it's all like, you are a part of whatever, whatever, not the purple type people and you need to go and kill all the purple type people. And then the next scene, you basically come crashing out of the sky and just like, bam! And then you start running around and just like, pew! Start shooting stuff. It dropped you right in the middle of a big-ass fight. It's almost like the whole damn thing was scripted, except for it happens all the goddamn time! Well, right, and that's I'm not saying that I don't understand how to play. I got, the, I, I got an understanding of what was going on, but I didn't feel as connected to what was going on. And that's where I feel like, like people might not necessarily keep up with you know because the, the the caller was asking about how long people will stay invested and and i feel like the reason why mmo players play for as long as they do is because they feel so invested into the the lore or the story i guess that's the same thing uh the pvp or whatever's going on um and i i just didn't feel as as compelled to be invested um as i have been with other games three words guild wars 2 this is a very, very recent lesson for the MMO community. Guild Wars 2 has an amazing story that goes along with it. If you really get into the lore behind Guild Wars 2, it's really fantastic. It has an amazing game world. It has an amazing environment. There's amazing people playing it. People were getting bored and quitting. Why? Because MMO gamers need a grind. They need something to grind out. If they don't have mm -hmm. that next carrot on the stick, they will stop playing. They will say, I love playing this game, but there's nothing for me to work towards, so I'm going to stop playing. Planet Side 2 has that and then some. There are so many different certs you can get, you will never unlock everything in that game unless you like start really, really spending money on that thing. So they've really so then I MMO like MMO players really have something to, to dig into with Planet Side too. Mm -hmm. If yeah, you look at certs like it's grind, then yeah. Okay. It's just endless. There's so much there's so much damn, there's so much stuff. Here's the thing. So you go <laughs> and you get like a weapon, right? And then you spend your entire life going through and unlocking every stupid thing, all kinds of redundant ass hardware on it, right? Then you and then um and then you uh then you're like yeah i'm gonna go ahead and throw down like a buck fifty two dollar fifty cent whatever it costs to go ahead and pick you up like another weapon and then it's like oh i got unlocked so it's for this too well guess what that's another grind right there oh look at that damn and more players love them a grind so there you go so you guys are proje pro projecting a, a pretty good shelf life for for planet side two then uh amongst I the mmo community i think like with any other mmo that comes out there's going to be a lot of people that try it and go uh this isn't for me but the fact that, A, it's totally free-to-play, completely and totally free-to-play. They do have a really good free-to-play model going along with it, too. Uh, and the fact that there is plenty to continue doing in that game. It's not something that you're ever going to feel like, well, I guess I could go take over this base, but I'm not going to really get anything out of it. You're always going to get something. Excuse me. That uh, the, the only real concern I have about it is that they may have made at least the initial uh, curve to get like your first couple of big unlocks a little bit too high. Like, I feel like you should be able to unlock a couple things relatively quickly on, but they may, that may also just be because I've been like, oh, I really want to get this awesome sniper rifle, so I haven't been buying stuff. I, I feel like there's plenty there to keep MMO gamers interested, and I, I, I can really, like, the first Planet Side was an amazing game that came out before the technology could really support it. Planet Side 2 is, it, it's the same idea, again, done in an environment where it can actually support the technology. I feel like it, I, I, I don't want to, call something a, a knockout success because what really makes an MMO successful it has nothing to do with the state of the game at the rele at release. It's how well uh, the developer keeps up with it over time. But it definitely has major, major potential to be a really, really big uh, a big uh, long-term game for people to be playing. Mm -hmm. Alright, so there you go. Uh, let's start out to the lines again and get another caller on the line here. Um, 20 minutes on one damn question. Damn. Caller on the line with Gameberg After Dark. Tell us your name, tell us where you're from, and uh, tell us your question. Hey, what's up, fellas? Um, my what's name up? is Gabe. I am from uh, Montreal, Canada. And my question Damn is Canadians. geared more towards... Uh, yeah, I know. You got to look Canadians. Uh, my gear is quite is uh, geared more towards um, Shafnit. But if uh, Laura and uh, Darnell want to participate, that's great. Is it a Final Fantasy no, question? That's it. That's no, it. no, no, no. It's, uh, it's, ah, it's about a show you had uh, on a few months ago. 
uh, regarding um, reviews on anime. Yes. And uh, it stopped. Yes. Uh, I liked it. I, I mean, I liked it. I, I didn't particularly agree with the review you, you gave that particular anime. Well, but un- I thought it was a good idea. Get off the line then if you don't agree with me. No. Uh, all <laughs> no, right. No, so, no, okay. It, it's just, I thought it was an awesome way to get, like, you know, like, it's been a while since I've gotten in touch with the anime world, whatever. It was a good way to get ideas of what new sh- to watch. Mm-hmm. Uh, my question is, why did that stop? And if you've been watching uh, recent anime, what can you recommend? More towards like the Wait, 26 oh, episode oh, oh. series instead of like the thousand series Naruto. Sure, 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 sure. Darn yeah, hold, hold, hold a minute, hold, hold a minute. Okay, I don't want to make sure that everybody's clear what's going on, especially everybody at home. Okay, what's going on right here? Someone just called in because they're mad because Mike S and himself do not agree on a cartoon. <laughs> Technically, that is exactly what's happening here. We want to make sure we set that. We want to go ahead and just set that up. Okay, we can fight all now day long ahead. about which one he didn't agree with. Um. All right, so what happened with it? Uh, I got extremely busy, uh, much like Darnell. It's something that I still love uh, and I still want to keep producing. Um, I just need to find the time it takes to not only watch a lot of series. If you think about it, every sh- every show is a half hour long. You, you have some certain series that go into episodes of five, six hundred up to a thousand. And then obviously, as you said, there's some, some mini series that go maybe 10 to, to 15. So it's a matter of not only finding the the time to to watch all these series, but then on top of it, create the content. Um, so it's just, it, it's something I want to get back to. I just got really, really busy. Now, um, as for stuff that I'm watching right now, uh, real quick, uh, personal preference on, did you like the Dot .hack series? Um, I, I watched a bit of it and I thought it was good. Yeah. Okay. So, and obviously, this is an MMO community. Have you checked out? Uh, and I mentioned it before, Sword Art Online. No, I haven't seen that. No. Uh, it's really good right now. They're they're in their second season. Um, it's it's another anime that's that's uh, entirely based on. Uh, <laughs> I just got a glimpse of Darno with <laughs> ears. Um, it, it's a it's a really good anime that's based on uh, a, a being trapped inside an MMO, uh, and, and if they die within the MMO, they they die in real life. So they kind of have to band together and and work their way to to beat the MMO in order to get out. Um, it, it's really good. I think the the first season is only about fourteen fifteen episodes, and they're still in the process of making it. Uh, Crunchyroll is where I'm watching it over at, and it's, you can watch it free over there. So definitely, I would say go check out like Sword Art Online. Um, if you're if you're that way, um, the other the other way that that I've been finding and, and you're asking how maybe good relocations, honestly, Netflix truly is the the way that I've I've been keeping up with anime. I I know there's other other sites that people use and people you know dub versus sub argument. I'm not even going to touch. Um, but uh, I would I would say that that ch- be sure to check out Netflix and uh, some of the other services. No. Hey, I'm sorry you guys can't be included in every question, but this one was directed at me. Sorry you guys don't watch anime. You guys should check it I, out. I said I said Laura and Darnell could uh, give their suggestions, but I mean, I there's, didn't think they were going to contribute. There's, there's clearly their thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, uh, the, off the top of my head, sort of online. Uh, <laughs> Shoot me, shoot me over something on Twitter, and and I'll think about it a little bit more, and and try and get back with you with it with a bigger list. But uh, for now, we'll move on from this topic, uh, and and I will definitely try and get back to you. Okay, I hear you. Bigger size, <laughs> holy cow! Uh, this next Twitter, <coughs> this next coast, uh, Twitter question is brought to you guys by Audible. Really, you're gonna even interrupt the plug here? Really? Come on, I'm plugging something for a free. 30-day trial and a free audiobook. If you guys head on over to audible.com slash gamebreaker, no TV, just slash gamebreaker. Uh, you guys can get a free audiobook and free 30 days of Audible where you can stream and listen to uh, audiobooks. So this next question is brought to you by Sarah. Uh, and she wants to know, what is your most anticipated game of 2013? The games come out in 2013. Damn. No, the world's gonna end nah, next month, so we we have no games to look forward to in 2013. You guys got any before I go and make Darnell sigh some more? <sighs> Easy cop out answer for me. Heart of the Swarm. Uh, yeah, most anticipated Heart of the Swarm. Uh, is Star Citizen is that 2013 or did they say 2014 on that? 
I'm not sure on that one. It's, it's on Kickstarter. One. Come on, ain't never gonna happen. It's yeah, like it's everything else. Like, oh, happen. it's on Kickstarter. Ain't never gonna see it. Ain't. Chris Roberts is gonna be like, by the way, Star Citizen is what I named my Mercedes Benz. Um. Well, darn it, I'm gonna go just so you can complain some more about my uh, my talking. I think for me, I don't know if you guys have seen the trailer for Grand Theft Auto Five. <laughs> uh, <laughs> How do you yawn that long? I don't understand. It's not a yawn. It's just a sigh. Oh, a sigh. Um. All right. So you thought that was the, the whole damn. Uh, Grand Theft Auto Five. Uh, if you haven't seen the recent trailers, part of it I'm really excited because it's based in uh, a makeshift Los Angeles. So I'm really excited to now that I've been living here for two years. I'm excited to kind of see a game based around a city that I've already lived in. And the other uh, the other <laughs> game that I'm really looking forward to is. I'm, I'm going to get a lot of hate for this, but I actually am looking forward to DMC. I think the uh, the new Devil May Cry is... Uh, I, I've oh, always man, been a like, fan of Devil May Cry. Um, always been a fan uh, of Devil May Cry, so I'm looking forward to that series and, and what they're going to do with the, the new franchise. Darnell, go! That's the game that you're looking forward to? But No, that was me. Oh. Darnell is just in awe. All right, well, uh, let's start out to another. Uh, <laughs> Darnell just doesn't even get to talk. Dar Darnell doesn't yeah, get to go. You. Cutting him off. No, I'm good. I'm good. Right. Uh, let's start out to another question. Call your online with Game Breaker After Dark. Tell us your name. Tell us where you're from and tell us your question. Hello. My name is Eduardo. I'm from Mexico. You lying. You lying. <laughs> you lying. You lying. I, I, I can't tell. I, I don't want to be mean, but I, I kind of feel like this is a, a prank call. But go ahead. A troll? <laughs> No, yeah. I'm not a troll. I'm really from Mexico. Okay. Is that okay, a real? So, is that your? Is that really the way you speak, though? Yeah. Damn, okay. my guy, you so racist. There, just <laughs> be like, oh, welcome, Taco. <laughs> yeah. I, I hear him laughing as he's using that accent, so it kind of sounds like a fake accent. But I, Damn, I just didn't know if this was a troll or not. All of a I didn't know if this is a troll or not. All right, go ahead. Eduardo. Racist. Okay. So, babe, be 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 an ass and say in <laughs> Spanish. <laughs> Many MMOs have a marriage system. You can get married in game. Some of these MMOs have a divorce mechanic. Divorce okay, rates I up. read an article about Maple Story and it says that 75% of the marriages in Maple Story end up in divorce. So how about we get lawyers as a as a profession <sighs> or maybe a class? Oh, damn. Some, some people, damn. some people make their their goals with weaponsmithing or armor smithing. I want to make my millions establishing prenup agreements and, spl and splitting out. Do you do you not believe? Yeah. Do you not believe in the sanctity of love? No. Eduardo is a genius. So my mom is a lawyer, and I know all about the stuff that happens in marriage. <sighs> that, that mean, would be amazing. <laughs> Damn. Oh, uh, yeah. I no, they I, have uh, something like that. They've got to have something like that in Second Life. They have everything in Second Life. That's but like would, would that be? Yeah, would that but be you have to play Second Life though. Is a problem. Would, <laughs> would that be? Would that be a way that you guys would would be interested in, in making? What What about the alternatives? I mean, we talked obviously sandbox MMOs. What What about having alternatives like that? To, to make gold or to, to play a game. Um, listen. Listen. When I played Star Wars Galaxies, all I did was make speeders. All day. Every day. I, I, it's not going to happen again, man. I'm not going to get suckered into not playing games. <laughs> I mean, when I'm playing games, again, it's not going to happen. No. You don't want those? Funny, I, I think that'd be so... It'd be so interesting. That's part of the reason why I like Sword Art Online. Is like I feel like they're MMO people who are making a living being a, a shop owner, and that's how they play the game. I'm why gonna, can't I be a lawyer? I'm gonna put in a suggestion to Blizzard to add a quest giver class, like that one quest in like Hillsbred. There we I go. Like I feel like you'd be really into that, <laughs> the, the quest giver class. But can I make up the quest? Can I make up the quest, or do I just have to stand there and hand it out? What they predefined it's the same to me. quest every single time. What are you Boo! Make up? No, I want to make there the quest. Go. I should be able to you be like, you should go quest. over here and do this crazy stuff, and then bring me the heart of this, and and then go do that. 
Like, what's so the point like of being a quest level giver? level five is going to walk up and you're going to be like, go kill Ragnaros. <laughs> yes. That would be hilarious. Trying to watch a level five going and killing Ragnaros. You would laugh. I know you would. <laughs> yeah, I'm still, I'm still, I mean, I, damn, I mean, a lawyer in a, in a, a divorce lawyer of all things. And they can have the, the insurance company, like type ones, the ones like, oh, if you're an insurance company, suck the balls, you can go ahead and call me up, 555 Donnell, got that ass. Like, that, that's what I'm talking about. That's genius. They should put all these dudes that everybody hates out here in the real world. Sorry about your mom, Eduardo. The hell? I, uh, this is, anyway, yeah, sorry about your mom, Eduardo, but you know, I'm just saying, it'd, this, be, it'd be nice if we put them in there. This was actually just delivered to me is that uh, Rift actually has divorce papers. That's one step towards a lawyer. Not just like a, a menu, like, hey, we're divorced. They actually have divorce papers. Can you get someone else to carry the papers for you to your spouse? Because you don't actually want to see her. Can, Can we get, get someone, someone to, to serve, serve you the, the papers? papers? Yeah. Yeah, there we go. So they have to go to people find you and stuff like that to be like, hey, are you uh, Eduardo or whatever? And then, <laughs> the, yeah, I'm Eduardo be like, you've been served. Damn. But oh, it, snap. Yeah. But then, like, but then the rate for name changes would go through the roof and they'd be making see, too much money. Makes money. That's how they make money. <laughs> there you go. That's Damn, sounds like, uh, a genius. Sounds like I'm quitting World of Warcraft. Nothing but Rift <laughs> all day. I'm just going to serve papers. That's going to be my job. All right. All right, let's throw it out to another Twitter question, or uh, actually another caller on the line here on Skype. Caller on the line with Game Breaker After Dark. Tell us your name, tell us where you're from, and tell us your question. Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, Quincy from New York. Uh, kind of mixed of a question, and just guys, generally your guys' opinion on, uh, you know, Titan. Um, so basically, like, you know, there hasn't really been a uh, MOBA-style game since Reign of Chaos, and it uh, seems like every project that Blizzard puts out or has talked about is kind of, like, shelved or, you know, moved on to, uh, you know, working or going to be in a future release or something like that, you know, with Starcraft Ghost and, uh, you know, the, the MOBA style RPGs that are supposedly coming soon. So, uh, just kind of wanted to get your guys' opinion on if you think, you know, Titan might be Blizzard's take on kind of a League of Legends or a Smite to kind of, you know, grasp that, that mm -hmm. market of esports they don't really have. No, mm -hmm. just because that's what Blizzard All-Stars is. It's already in production. So. And what about the fact that, uh, I mean, we got to consider... I, I I didn't I didn't look deep into the story, but, but I saw a hit right here on Game Breaker TV where they're they're still talking about trying to introduce uh, a MOBA battleground to World of Warcraft. Correct? I mean, they talked about it at BlizzCon they, last year. People kind of thought it was dead in the water, it. but but it yeah. turns out that it's not. Uh, I think it was Ghostcrawler said on Twitter Twitter the other day that it was like, oh, it's not it's not canceled. It's just uh, not. I don't remember exactly what he said. It's not shelved. They're still talking about it or something. So it didn't sound like it was something that was like super in production. Like, oh, here's how we're going to implement this. It sounded like something they were still trying to figure out how to do. But it's still a possibility for World of Warcraft at some point. That's so, I mean, it's not. Yeah. I mean, and as, as you said, the, the hardcore like MOBA is, is, is Blizzard All-Stars. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, they're the, just the rumblings I've heard from uh, general just people around the, the Blizzard community and the esports community. Is that they've actually like because when they originally unveiled Blizzard All Stars, it was just like a mod for SC2. But it sounds like they've actually decided to say, okay, you know what? Instead of just doing this mod thing, we're actually going to go a whole hog with this, and they're actually making like a full on Dota clone. So uh, I say Dota clone, but yeah, a full on MOBA with it. So it sounds like that's actually going to be a very very serious, uh, uh, very serious outing for them in the MOBA space. All right, let's throw it out to another question and uh, keep the show rolling. Uh, call you on the line with Game Breaker After Dark. Tell us your name, tell us where you're from, and let us know your question. Uh, hello? Hey. Domino's? Hi. Hi, um, I'm Matt from Ottawa, Canada. What? Are you sure you're Canada? not Domino's? I mean, this might be. Could be. Ottawa? I'm hungry. Yeah. What? Domino's? Oh. No, it's... Pizza Hut. Ottawa. Subway. Domino's? Anyway. Okay, whatever. <laughs> uh, my question Damn. is... I'll just say Toronto. You'll know what that is. Um, my question is um, about the Elder Scrolls Online. Uh, my question is, do you think that Elder Scrolls will have any innovative gameplay relative to other MMOs that happened in the past? I know they're trying to do some Dark Age of Camelot kind of style PvP, but uh, do you think they're going to make anything innovative or will it just be another WoW clone? Also, I think they released the new races. Do you know what races you'd be playing, or would you play the MMO when it comes out? 
Uh, I'll play it when it comes out for sure. I'm just kind of curious as someone who enjoys Elder Scrolls games. Like, I'm still, I'm still very skeptical on, and I know this isn't directly answering your question, but I'm still skeptical on whether or not they can actually make the Elder Scrolls work in an MMO setup and have it still feel like an Elder Scrolls game. Because to agree me, Elder you. Scrolls, yeah, Elder Scrolls has always been to me about being the supreme ultimate badass surrounded by a whole bunch of people that just go, oh my god, it's that guy every time they see you. But if there's 500,000 other of that guy wandering around, that seems kind of... Now, eh, now wait, because so. I, I agree with you, and we had this talk uh, a couple episodes back where we talked about the god complex that comes with Elder Scrolls, but let's let's throw World of Warcraft under the bus here, because they say the same thing. They They... They, you know, we we're meant to feel like these absolute awesome heroes that killed Arthas and and killed uh, uh, Deathwing, even though it was Thrall. You know, World of Warcraft still does it, where they try and make you feel like the big hero, even though it's ambiguous enough, a- ambiguous enough to be the every player. So, with that being said, do you think they could pull it off? Well, you start off like a regular dude, though. Like you don't start off like, oh, welcome, Dragon Slayer. Like, you start off from World of Warcraft like, oh, welcome, we brought you back from the dead. Do us a favor, because we're really busy. Go knock on them other coffin and see if they feel like coming out. If not, then F them. Move on to the next one. And that's pretty much the way it works. And then eventually you grow up and you can do all this stuff and kill dragons and But why can't why can't Elder Scrolls do people? that? Well, Elder Scrolls can do that. It's just, it's not going to translate directly for me. It's something that, when I was playing uh, Warcraft 3, which is what I was playing before I got into World of Warcraft, when I was playing Warcraft three, and that like that was the the genre or the um the, where the franchise was before World of Warcraft came out, it was another thing where you just had a whole bunch of guys you were controlling around, moving them all over the place. So I already sort of felt like okay, a Warcraft MMO, I'm going to feel like just another grunt, but I'm gonna I'm gonna be that grunt. I'm gonna go around and I'm gonna live that grunt's life, and I'm gonna go home to that grunt's kids and that grunt's wife, and I'm gonna I, okay, yeah, maybe maybe not that whole. That don't thing. sound good at all. Damn, I feel so <laughs> damn. Yeah, no, but um, I feel like with Elder Scrolls, oh, there's it's something that there's very much, it, it, at the very least, it's going to be hard for me to get over that sense of, okay, well, this isn't really the Elder Scrolls, right? Like, that's something that's going to, it's going to be a problem for me to to overcome that sort of sense. And I feel like a lot of people are going to have the same thing, where the, uh, a lot of the, at the very least, Elder Scrolls fans are going to jump into it and go, uh, this really isn't what I want out of Elder Scrolls game. And I don't even remember initially what the question was anymore exactly. What uh, well, was I was about. I was going to bring it back now. He he brought up uh, what do you think is is Elder Scrolls really doing anything innovative, or do you think mm. that they'll have anything innovative? Uh, and then he also mentioned uh, that they released new classes, and if we knew yet what class we were going to play. Yeah. Um, or race, I think. Uh, race. Yeah. I I actually haven't seen the races, so I'm not sure. Um, I I, I would probably play an orc if that's available, but. I don't, I don't know exactly what races they, they've said are available. I haven't seen those myself. Um, if they can pull off the ability to feel like you are a real badass in a world surrounded by other people who also feel like a real badass, that, I feel, would be innovative. That's something that Star Wars The Old Republic tried to do, and in my opinion, didn't really they didn't really pull it off very well, because everybody just kind of felt like... I don't know. I, I liked the story aspect of Star Wars The Old Republic, but it didn't really feel like it really nailed the I am... Also, I am awesome, and these other guys that I hang out with, I guess they're all right too, but I'm the awesome one of the group. If they can manage to pull that off in The Elder Scrolls, then that'll be that'll be fantastic, and that would be something very, very uh, innovative. It's just a question of, are they actually able to do it? I don't think things like three-faction PvP, which everybody has nowadays, except yeah, for Yeah, it's no longer eliminated. Everybody has them. Yeah, it's, it's something that everybody just kind of has come to understand. Oh, well, if we're going to have large-scale PvP, there needs to be three factions. I don't think it's really something that has been... In fact, I wouldn't even call it innovative in games like Guild Wars 2, because it was something that's like Dark Age of Camelot really did the innovating there, I would say. So, I don't know. I, I, I really feel like if there is an innovation to be had, maybe something along the lines of the combat system, but more likely it would be along the, the lines of the story that's actually going into... Uh, the Elder Scrolls Online, and if they can manage to pull that off. Now, did I just make this up? I, I I might be getting this confused with Lord of the Rings, but are they doing mounted combat? Or is that just I, me thinking about Lord of the Rings? I'm not sure. I honestly, I haven't, I haven't looked too closely into the little bits of the Elder Scrolls Online that have come out so far, just because 
it's a game that I, I know I'm going to have to play before I can really form a solid opinion of it. Sure. So I haven't been super, super reading into it just yet. Yeah, and I, I gotta, I mean, I'm mostly, you know, I'm, I'm on the same stance as you with, uh, you know, three-faction PvP is, is definitely nothing that is uh, innovative anymore. It, it's just kind of come to be expected with, with massive PvP. Um, and and I'm, I'm worried about the god complex that's going to come with Elder Scrolls Online, but if they can pull it off, I, I agree with you. It might be something that is uh, innovative that a lot of people... Uh, latch on to so let's start out to another caller and uh, see what you guys are asking over on the lines in the line with gamebreaker after dark Tell us your name. Tell us where you're from and tell us your question Hello, my name is Jay uh, from Kitchener, Canada, Ontario And I've called him before so I've got I got two questions this one First one's more directed to you Mike and then the second one is more directed to all you guys So the first one is I watched a podcast and they do a thing called Death Battle. And what they do is they'll take either characters from games or even just characters from franchises I, that you generally I, see. I love together. the one between Link and, and Cloud, death. by the way. I know and exactly what you're talking about. They're doing one, this is a really big one. They're doing Superman versus Goku. Now, taking all the stats that you would go from <laughs> that, who do you think would win in that fight there, Mike? And as Superman, for the second though. question. <laughs> And this is for everyone. With Garrosh being the final boss in Miss and Pandaria already announced, do you think this would all put a twist and actually have both factions team up in actual raids to go ahead and take on Garrosh? And do you think that might be a good idea? And what do you think the players would think about that if they were to try that at all? Thanks, guys. All right, so real quick, I'm going to hold you on the line just to, so we can get back to your, uh, your second question. First part... Um, I'm gonna make this really quick between Goku and and Superman as as big of an anime fan as I am I love Dragon Ball Z. I've got to give the points to Superman uh, Just because I feel like uh, Superman's more impenetrable his, his, his really only weakness is Kryptonite versus Goku who has yeah, been unless, unless Goku's hair turns into Kryptonite when he goes Super Saiyan that's that's a pretty easy win yeah. for Superman. <laughs> I gotta, I, and I, I, I'll be interested to see the death battle because they always do a really good job of crunching numbers and, and coming up with really unique, like that. I, I honestly think that they, they do the analysis properly of, of, of who would win in, the, in those fights. So it'll be, it'll be an interesting fight. Now, uh, the second part was uh, Garrosh and, and multi raids. Okay, so um, Josh, what do you got? Do you got any thoughts on, on if they would allow multi faction raiding? in uh w w with whatever patch i'm not quite sure what number this might be but, but when it comes time to take down garrosh you think that they would let horde and alliance in the same raid i doubt it mostly because of technical reasons like it just seems like a huge undertaking for them to even be able to do something like that when i don't know it feels like technical reasons i think the only technical reason i, I i'll let you continue but when the only technical limitation be like with TOGC where there was different gear for different factions beyond that it's just a matter of putting people on the same server wouldn't how it? do you how do you invite them to your group how do you get into the same raid together how do you communicate with each other when you're in there can you not heal people from the other faction or can you heal people from the other faction is it something that both raids just sort of zone in and now there's 50 people in there instead of 25 there's there's a lot of like just minute little how 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 does this actually function issues that they would have to solve to be able to actually pull it off i feel like it's a much bigger undertaking than it might seem at first glance to be able to pull something like that off um and aside from that it just does it it seems like if you're going to have that be the final boss of the expansion if i'm a raiding guild i don't want to have to team up with an alliance raiding guild to be able to take down the 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 last boss of the expansion especially since the whole thing has been themed around war the entire time mm. i don't want to have mm -hmm. to suddenly be like oh by the way uh yeah signs of destiny how about we go kill garrosh i mean i know i've been killing you on site for the past like year but we should we should go kill garrosh sometime that sounds that sounds like that. yeah like how, they, how they decide all of our differences yeah. How, Sorry how you... for raping and pillaging your villages and stuff. <laughs> My bad. Yeah. How how would you how would you organize that? How are you now forcing all of 
Like, is does every raid now have to find another raid from the other faction on their server to be able to do that? Well, like, what happens when there's more horde raiding guilds than alliance raiding guilds on a given server? It just seems like a giant mess to try to actually coordinate. Now, what do you think about? Uh, well, I guess I guess the other thing, and not even what do you think about? I think the other thing is we've seen a lot of pretty decent storytelling this time around. Not that we haven't in the past, but it's they're really driving that home. And I think what Blizzard will definitely want to capitalize on here is the two very distinct differences in story as to why the Horde are taking down Garrosh and why the Alliance are. There, there's two experiences that are going on there um, that would potentially be slighted if you took the time to intermix them while you can make it a, a really grand and exciting experience for each faction by keeping them their own individual experience. Um, so I think that just in general, the answer is we don't expect it to be, but it'd be, it'd be interesting, but I don't, it'd be, really it'd be cool interesting to have content like that. Yeah. I, I just don't think this, this will be the, the content that they do it on. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe we uh, team up with Superman and the Goku dude. And there we go. That's how you take them down. Scenarios would actually be a great way to pull it off with Superman with super. Yeah. Superman scenarios. But then, mm -hmm. then as soon as you do that, you're going to open a can of worms and people are going to want to start to. Uh, be traitors to their factions and then you're going to want humans who want to be able to be horde and and I know that's going to open up that that whole door that's been being fought for the past couple bring, of years. Bring him on. We'll just, <laughs> just 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 you guys, you guys just line up over there and just uh, bow your heads. Why not? We'll, just, we'll, we'll bow your head. Let me, I'm just going to get my sword out. I think quick, and you guys can just I think the, the uh, way that they should allow the trader system is sure you can have a human become a horde member, but every horde member still has the ability to kill that human. You can you can you can go raid with them. You can go uh, have fun with the horde, but you're still a human and they still reserve the right to kill you if they if you tick them off. You're a traitor. You should get punished. All right, let's start out to another question. Uh, let's see what else is out on the line. Call you on the line with Gamebreaker After Dark. Tell us your name, tell us where you're from, and tell us your question. Hey, guys, this is uh, Jamie from Mississippi. And my question is, do you think that a Halo MMO will happen with a persistent world similar to uh, Planet Side 2 or even World of Warcraft with the armor customization and that type of thing? Halo MMO, I feel like this... Specifically Halo... Like three, three, four, three industries. Halo. Yeah, I'm like, saying Bungie well, Halo. We're saying three, four, three Halo more around it, having like humans, the Covenant, and you know, forerunners or whatever they're gonna, you know, add in on that. I heard about this uh, Destiny thing Bungie's actually building, which kind of piqued my interest and made me think about it because I read something about it being more of a social game. So I was thinking, you know, MMO well, in that. That, that vein. Here's part of the problem with that is uh, Bungie walked away from the Halo franchise when they left Microsoft. So they don't Man, own it said, anymore. He says it like he abandoned them or something. <laughs> Bungie, my daddy Bungie left me. They were Bungie. They, but but they, they, they not only they left Microsoft, so they left the Halo franchise. And um, I think the other thing that I, and correct me if I'm wrong, they said that they want to try new ventures. Now, that could mean something like an MMO that has to do with a Halo type series. But that also could stand a reason that they're trying to do something and break out from the success that was Halo. Yes? No? Maybe? Yeah. Well, here, here's the thing. Could a Halo MMO happen? Yeah, possibly. Could a Halo MMO happen developed by Bungie? No, not going to happen. Mm -hmm. Not unless Bungie goes back to Microsoft somehow. Uh, just not going to happen. I think there's a high possibility that at some point Microsoft will look at the Halo franchise and say, you know what, we should make an MMO out of this. And maybe they'll do something like with Planetside. Maybe they'll do something else entirely. Maybe they'll do something like what Tabula Raza was. Uh, any, anything, there's any way they could go with that thing. I think it's possible to see a Halo MMO. It's definitely not Destiny, and it if it if and when it does happen, it will probably not be developed by Bungie. All right, let's start yeah, out to no, no, okay, well, damn, go ahead. No, I'm just, I agree. Like you know, that's pretty much it. Yeah, it, it's not gonna happen anytime soon. They still gotta put out like 15 more Halos. It's pretty much the new <laughs> Call of Duty. Oh gosh, be like Halo, Halo five and a half. Point seven. Come by this game. I can't wait for Halo versus four two to come out. 
That being said, though, because uh, it sounds like you guys are are, are being kind of hard on on the Halo franchise, uh, what are your guys' thoughts right now on on Halo Four? Is it is it living up to to what it used to be, or is it is it is it turning into Call of Duty? I haven't played it. Heard really good things about it. People seem to be accepting it well. I haven't had a chance to play it yet. Yeah, it's kind of awesome. I mean, we just talk smack, you know what I'm saying? Because that's kind of show this is. So yeah, I've I've heard it's really really good, and I I I, I keep lovingly looking at my xbox and going i would love to put halo in you but then wow damn. that's kind damn. Of damn but then i turn away and I, I walk away sadly as a single tear rolls down my cheek all right let's throw it out to another uh a twitter question and uh then we'll throw it back out to the lines this one's gonna be really quick uh sutter kane wants to know at darnell sup you got any hard feelings over klaus and squirrel they're stealing your gig man they're stealing my gig what the they're uh, they're, they're they're running around doing some let's plays. Have you not have you not seen the new let's plays right here on Game Breaker TV with with Klaus and and Squirrel? Everybody's wondering who who Klaus and Squirrel. Well, I, th I think everybody know at this point knows who Squirrel is, but everybody's wondering who and Klaus everyone is. Everyone knows that only Darnell <laughs> does let's plays. So yeah, it's got to be you, person. Obviously, yeah. I mean, I don't, do, do yeah, I have audio much, yeah. here? I think I got audio. I mean, come on, this has got to be you. Oh wait, maybe I don't have audio. Let's see here. Just make the sound with your voice. Go ahead. Go ahead. Just say it. Uh, just be like, yeah, I am the German guy, yeah. All right, it doesn't, it doesn't want to play, but it. Everybody wants to know who is it. Is it Darnell? Is it, I think we just established this at the beginning of the show, though. It's you, Josh, right? Yeah. See, such a great German accent. Um. All right, let's no, start. How is it stealing my gig? Hold on, a second, real quick. How's that stealing my gig? How's that stealing my gig? I mean, how's I mean, seriously, is he still on the phone? How is the phone? Hello. It was. Uh, yeah, here. Oh, okay. Um, at you. Shut up. It's not my gig. I'm playing, damn it. Sometimes I play video games where, you know, I record my adventures doing things and I post them. That's pretty much it. Technically, that kind of falls in the same line as like Paris Hilton. She records her adventures. She put them on the, the <laughs> internet. Kind of the exact same thing, just slightly different. All right. Well, if you guys don't know what you're talking about, we got a brand new show. Uh, Klaus and Squirrel running around on Planet Side 2 and just, uh, it's it's like gameplay with a very high pitched squirrel and a very low pitched German. So be sure to go check that out, guys, right here on Game Breaker TV. All right, let's throw it out to another uh, caller. See what you guys got to say. Caller on the line with Game Breaker After Dark. Tell us your name. Tell us where you're from, and tell us your question. Well, first I want to say before I announce who I am, I'm the mysterious voice out here. I have to say no one's gonna take Darnell's gig. Darnell is Darnell. No one can. Do yeah. It. I'm sorry. My name is Zanon. All right, now go ahead. Be from, from Canada. Dallas, Texas. And oh, my okay, question is over esports generally. Uh, so, like, games like StarCraft II, Call of Duty, Tekken, and League of Legends, to an extent, have been brought up into the esports mainly by the community. So, how do you feel about new games that are coming out uh, for the developers who are trying to force themselves into esports, or force their game into esports, rather? You mean like Firefall? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, like yeah, like <laughs> Firefall. Uh, I think that's like the biggest one out there. And there's like a bunch of other under the radar games that I've seen at ML Dallas that are like, oh, we're coming into esports, and I don't even know their names. Yeah, well, what, I, like, um, hang yeah, on. Smite is a game that really wanted to be super esports. Uh, Tribes was one that was trying to take off as an esport, couldn't really, couldn't really handle it. There's lots of games out there that. Uh, and, I, and I don't want to like because I know there's communities that are building built up around and building up around these games still too, but we haven't seen as many games really pulling in the big numbers that like a StarCraft or a League of Legends will pull up. Even Dota 2 is uh, it's growing rapidly, but it's still got a long ways to go before it can compete with the others. Right. Like, well, you were gonna say something. Um, mostly like. I, the, the question's kind of geared to like communities bring up the the game into the esports community, but what's your opinion on how like a developer trying to push it? Like, will will it see the same growth, or will it still have to be more community driven? I mean, I think a developer can try and push a game as much as they want to be an esport, but if if the if the community and the fans playing it don't get behind it and get behind the competitive nature of the game, it doesn't matter what the developers say if the gamers aren't going to play it. Yeah, that's kind of my opinion on it too. Because Firefall, they're yeah. trying to say, "Oh, we'll have, we'll bring a truck out to there." I'm like, 
okay, but it, like if you don't have commentators, because that's kind of the big thing is, in my opinion, is you if you have to have the commentators who know the game, who can show the game so that you can have a viewer base watch the game, and then you need the pros to play the game. If you don't have kind of that community base, it's not going to help. And I was just wondering if you guys had this kind of the same overview or if you felt that the developers can still have a hand in on how things are because you can't have developers do like the spectator side whereas the community uses it and i just want i'm just wondering if it's kind of like um i kind of just lost my train of thought here because i'm thinking well, you, a million things at once because i'm no. on tv and i'm freaking yeah. out right now oh, <laughs> damn i don't remember my question <laughs> Well, no, yeah, and I, I think you're, you're, you're definitely right in, in that vein. I mean, you got to think about the fact that you look, look at StarCraft teams that, that get houses and live together. I mean, it's, it's a community-based thing that, that pushes it to, to be this big, extravagant esport. Um, and and if, again, like I said, if the community doesn't get behind it, I don't, I don't think you can build a competitive esport and just say that it's going to be if, if the community doesn't want to play it. I don't know. Do you guys agree? Yeah, I think... I mean, I look at things like Dota 2, which has a couple of small tournaments, and then the International, which is, like, enormous because Valve wants to build up a bunch of hype around it. I look at things like League of Legends, even, which is one of the more popular esports right now, but it's something that we're seeing sponsors having trouble really wanting to latch onto because it's so, uh, so stringent on whether or not Riot feels like supporting a particular venture or not. Riot works closely with IPL, they work with MLG, uh, and obviously they run their own tournament. And that's the only reason that those can really even go anywhere. One of the biggest reasons that StarCraft has been and continues to be, uh, like, mathematically the most successful, I'm not talking about in terms of, like, overall viewer numbers, because obviously League of Legends has the highest viewer numbers, uh, concurrent viewer, viewers right now. But in terms of overall, like, uh, income and revenue that's being earned from stuff, the biggest reason that StarCraft really continues to be so successful is that as aside from some like little licensing things that have to go on just to make sure that they're like covering their bases and everything, Blizzard really doesn't get too super involved with the actual tournaments. They don't get in there and micromanage everything and say, okay, well we've got to have our own refs in there. We've got to make sure all the rules are going properly. We got to do all that. No, they let they let each tournament each tournament can have their own structure. Each tournament can do their own thing. And in, unless you have like I think it's five thousand dollars prize pool, you can run a tournament and. You don't even have to ask Blizzard about it. They don't, they don't even care. They're like, whatever, go for it. No problem. So I, I feel like, I feel like really, in terms of long-term success for an eSport, there's a couple ways to go about doing it. We're, we're kind of looking at two right now. There's the way Riot has been handling things. There's a way that Blizzard has been handling things. And I feel like the way Blizzard handles things is probably a little bit better, the way they've been than working with StarCraft 2, especially more recently as they've been working harder on supporting their, the eSports side of things. That's really what it comes down to for me, is that a developer can have a significant impact and will have a significant impact on the success of a game as an eSport, but it needs to be from a support standpoint. It needs to be from the perspective of saying, okay, well, we will give you the tools, uh, and we will listen to the people that want to make our game an eSport, and we will create something for them so that they can make our game into a successful eSport. Not a matter of sitting back and saying, okay, well, we're going to do this and this and this, and that's why our game is an eSport, and it's going to be successful because of that. I don't think that will ever work out that way. All right, let's start out to another question because uh, we got more people on the line. Caller, you're on the line with Gameburger After Dark. Tell us your name, tell us where you're from, and shoot us out your question. Echo. Hello, this is Peter. Uh, I'm from California, Arcata specifically. And I was wondering, you know, when I was growing up, I experienced buyer's remorse all the time after I was buying a game. And game fly I was before you buy. What games have given you some really bad bouts of buyer's remorse? Terra. Diablo. <laughs> damn. Uh, <laughs> Wait, didn't even buy damn. I... Just kidding. I never spent a dime on Terra. That wasn't that wasn't gonna happen. <laughs> uh so buyer remorse. You guys uh have you guys had anything like recently within the past couple months that you've gone out and bought and just been like that was a waste? Very recently. <laughs> Yes, but they're all really good games, so I don't feel like it really fits the question. Like, I bought Borderlands 2, and I played it for about maybe, like, eight hours, and I, I just haven't, I haven't gotten back to it. I, I, I'm, like, I bought Torchlight 2, and it's a really, really good game, and I just haven't gotten back to it, because there's just so much stuff to do right now. So I feel like that doesn't really answer the question directly, because the, the buyer's remorse for games that I get is always on the games that I want to play more of and just don't have time. Just say 
Mass Effect 3. Oh, the, yeah, that one. That one for sure. There we go. Yeah. Uh, I, I think for me, the, 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 you kind of mentioned something with Planet Air, uh, not Planet Side, uh, Borderlands. I, I find myself always intrigued to just pay a dollar, and it's a dollar. It's not like it's buyer's remorse, but for like the Angry Birds games, because I buy them and then I play them for about two or three hours and then I never touch them again. And as a dollar, I can't really have buyer's remorse for a dollar, but I just like, why did I even pay the money for that for that game? It's not I'm, a bad I'm game, but I'm not playing it. I'm going to help you out. If you want games to play on your mobile device, go watch Just the Tip. Every single game I've reviewed for Just the Tip is better than Angry Birds. <laughs> Even the ones you, I don't like. <laughs> have you tried Order and Chaos? The people who made the, uh, the mobile iOS MMO, they just came out with a MOBA. That's very League of Legends esque that I played. It came out like two days ago. It's it's supposedly like the first MOBA on the iOS. I don't know how I feel about it, but it's free to play it, and it I has played, rotating champions and it's much. It's very like League of Legends or Dota. I, you you say it won't work, but earlier today I played a third person shooter, multiplayer third person shooter on my Android. On oh, my those F3. exist. Those have existed yep, for a while amazing. though. Modern Combat. Yeah, what's up? Not not as not as fluid as this one. <laughs> oh, all right. Yeah. It was it's Shadowgun Dead Zone. It just came out like a week ago. It's amazing. You guys should go watch it. I've been playing it all day. And is that uh is that a just the tip that just came out at all, or is that coming out? Just hit, just hit my channel today. youtubecom slash Devil Lord. Check go, it out. Go watch yeah. it. Just yeah. the tip came out. Just the tip came <laughs> out earlier today. Just chicken. Uh, <laughs> all right, let's start out to another caller before this spirals out of control. Uh, call you on the line with Game Breaker After Dark. Tell us your name. Tell us where you're from, and tell us your question. Hey everyone, it's Tyler from Michigan. Hey Ty. I uh, just got a question about Rift. Uh, in my opinion, the game is awesome. There's a ton of things that you can do to keep it fresh while leveling, and also the end game. Uh, the server size is healthy, but there isn't anywhere near as many servers as there was at launch. Hey Tyler, your opinions, real quick, hang on, Tyler. What uh, is the game? Yes. Um, real quick, did, did you? I, I, you're a Rift player. You, you obviously love the yes, game right I, now. Did you? Did absolutely. you keep playing, or did Storm Legion bring you back? Uh. I kept playing for a while. I took a break for probably about a, a year and a half, and the hype round Storm Storm Legion brought me back. So, are you are you liking uh, the features that they've added? Do you think that they, it was it was everything it needed to to reinvigorate Rift? I think that the uh, the level grind to uh, sixty is uh, quite extensive, but it's it's really easy to jump from like uh, you know PvP to the instant adventures, the questing, and uh, dungeons and everything like that. There's a lot of ways that you can level that keeps it pretty fresh. So I'm pretty satisfied with it so far. Wonderful. All right, so and you had a... Uh... Look at that, everybody. The hype paid off. <laughs> See? It ain't always bad. Well, I did actually do the uh, Volan Colossus uh, event last night, and uh, it took like two seconds to uh, cast something. The ability lag was uh, unbelievable. But uh, it was probably the coolest thing I've done in, the, uh, in an MMO. Definitely a big, big time world boss. Wonderful. All right, so uh, you got a riff related question. Go ahead. Right, right. Uh, the servers, you know, there aren't as many as there have been at launch. Uh, in your opinions, what does a game like Rift have to do to promote itself in order to break back through and grow to what it once was? And in the case of Rift or Final Fantasy XIV, which is coming back out, uh, is breaking through in a population after launch even possible in an MMO? I think it's Ooh. I think it's tough to say breakthrough because we have to remember when Rift came out, Rift had such a great timing when it came out because everything everybody was in that lull of I don't like World of War. It was kind of right where Guild Wars was at. And everybody jumped in uh to Rift and and and, and there's a huge massive influx and I, I've heard Gary say this before, a lot more than they were probably expecting to begin with. So that thrust it into to massive popularity and then it started to die back down. Um, obviously we've, we've lost servers because of that. Um, but I, I don't think that it necessarily, I don't think it'll get back to where it was. I think that's partially due to, uh, the time and, and, and where everybody was at the other side that I'm, I'm glad to see that, that storm legion reinvigorated you and you started playing again. Um, I personally feel like the MMO player is a lot more unforgiving than uh, a lot of the other gamers out there. If they get in and experience a game and they've tried out Rift and they don't think it's their cup of tea, even if they've only played for 
an hour or two or, or, or maybe even a week. If they just don't feel it's their reason or for whatever reason, they feel like Rift is too much like World of Warcraft. Well, why don't I play World of Warcraft? Um, they have trouble coming back to it after they've already made that decision. So they're, they're a lot less forgiving to jump in and try a game again, even if they come back with something like Storm Legion did. Yeah, and honestly, I kind of think that looking at a game like Rift and saying um, there, there aren't as many people playing the game as there used to be, what does Rift need to do to get back to having bigger numbers? I kind of feel like that's not necessarily an important thing for them to be trying to do, right? They, they need to be making sure that the people who are playing their game are having a ton of fun, and then the, the numbers will just sort of naturally come from there. As those people say, dude, I'm playing this game, I'm really liking it, you need to check it out. That's, that's part of what made World of Warcraft so big to be. World of Warcraft was the MMO. It was the first MMO for so many people because it was something that... Things making noises. It was something that so many people were, were playing and then said, okay, you got to check this out. And they were getting all their friends into playing uh, World of Warcraft. And I feel like uh, that, that same sort of concept still works for the MMO space. It's because they, they are very social games. It's something that you have to get friends to be playing together in. Mm-hmm. So I feel like I feel like looking at it and saying, okay, well, Rift doesn't have X number, right? They don't have Y million subscribers, so they're not doing well. It doesn't. That's not necessarily accurate. A game can, like we see Eve, be really, really successful and continue to be successful with. I, I, I how many people are playing Eve nowadays? It's not. It's not a ton. It's like, like it's six not, people with like five thousand accounts each. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. It's it's not a ton of people playing playing Eve. But they continue to be successful, and they continue to be able to add things to the game and continue doing stuff. I feel like as long as Rift is enjoyable for the people who are playing with playing it, that's what Tryon needs to be focusing on: is making sure that okay, we've got these guys. This is our community right now. Let's make sure our community is happy. Because if our community is happy, then they're going to get more people to play the game, and we will continue to be successful from there. Yeah, because you know when you go and start the, the back with Rift, if, if you don't have a high level character from before, then you got to start over. People don't want to do that stuff. Yeah, you have you look at it like World of Warcraft. It's like, yeah, I got five thousand level eighty nines and a halves. I'll go and like hit something and ding on all of them. And then they look at Rift and like, damn, I'm level one or level twenty five or whatever it is. You know, they they don't want to start over. They they get in there and it's like, oh, this is the same thing. I the same place I left. Do you think that you yeah, they got all this extra, extra stuff like the instant adventures and all that stuff? I'm not saying it. there's nothing wrong with Rift. Rift is a good game, you know, the housing and stuff. I could build giant stone dicks and all that stuff all day long, right? But and then that's and that's cool and everything. I'm just saying, like, you know, people are lazy. We don't want to do nothing else. So we're like, yeah, we already put all our work here. We don't got to do anything else. We're done. Unless there's unless there's somebody in there telling you, okay, you need to level up so you can do all this stuff, and you got someone sort of badgering you over it, you're probably not going to say all right well you know i'm tired of pandas let's go play rift instead and, and get as into it as you would if uh, if you had somebody there so you uh, think to play with would you guys say that the familiarity of world of warcraft in in combination with the fact that a lot of people have tried it and played it and kind of sit around max level contributes to the reason why they're able to I don't want to say make massive comebacks. I, I don't think they've, they've hit the numbers that they've seen in the past, but we always see a, a big influx back to WoW when an expansion hits. You mean like uh, you're saying the, the fact that everybody has a high level character yeah. is why that... And, and that's, yeah, that's why much. the expectations for something like Rift that comes out with something like Storm Legion should see this massive flux of people uh, yeah. resubscribe is because it's precedented by World of Warcraft. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And, and because... Like the, the reason that it happens in World of Warcraft is everybody's got a level 85 in World of Warcraft, right? Mm -hmm. So everybody can go and buy Mists of Pandaria and immediately be getting Mists of Pandaria content. So everybody will go and do that. And then, oh, they'll come out with a new patch. Well, now everybody's got a 90 in World of Warcraft. So everybody's going to go and check out this new patch and so on. So that's, uh, that's definitely a huge part of why World of Warcraft is so hard to keep people away from which is why I was talking about with Rift. That's why they need to just make sure that the people who are playing their game already are happy with playing their game and not necessarily worry so much about we need to hit X milestone of this many million subscribers or we fail. Just make sure that they, they can structure their game around the people who are currently playing it and enjoying it. What they should do, they, they should do like, uh, like what Warcraft did when it was like, oh yeah, invite, invite your friends and he'll get an instant level X. Remember level 80 or whatever it was. 
that would that would actually be amazing. That would that's exactly what they should do. It's about time someone steals some, some BS from Blizzard. That actually worked. That actually worked. I mean, I I, I had another account. I was like, yeah, I'm going to go make a mage. Level 80. Logged in. All my achievements. All that stuff. Ding, 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 ding. And I was like, well, mage sucks. Logged out. <laughs> and that was it. All right. Let's start out to our final question for the night. To call you on the line with Gabriel After Dark. Tell us your name. Tell us where you're from. And uh, tell us your question. Hey, Mike. It's uh, Rich from Breckenridge. Hey, Rich. Hey, you've called before because I always get stumbled multiple, with your Rich with Breckenridge. Multiple times. Yeah. How's it going? How you been? How you, you been since two weeks ago? How I've been since two weeks ago? Well, I was good Tell last us about week. how you, you used to live in Breckenridge. Glad, glad to see you're back. Thank you. I'm glad to be back. The show actually, well, didn't start on time. <laughs> Darnell. Uh, but <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Rich, what's your question? All right, so I've been hearing about Blade and Soul. Uh, it looks really good. Uh, but uh, with the other Asian imports like Ion and Terra not doing so hot, uh, with North American and EU players, uh, what do you think Team Bloodlust would need to do to tailor it to those markets? Or if you, if you prefer, uh, can they break the trend of the Asian imports being just kind of a meh MMO for, for us in North American and EU markets? Do you think that, uh, and I'll throw this out to you, Rich, actually, if you, if you don't mind hanging on for a second, do you think sure. that that could maybe be uh, just a cultural difference issue we're, we're starting to see that a lot with uh, the way that jrpgs have gone is is they're not being as received well as the western rpgs do you just think that the the mindset of of the uh eastern culture and and the way that they make their games is just not ever going to translate over uh to the western culture in well, general well, yeah i mean if you if you were to take a direct import and, and we've seen it in the past where they take a direct import and do very little other than verbal, you know, or or translation, uh, and they bring that directly over to this market. It we play it, and and it's like a brick wall for for us. We just smash our head into it, and then go, "This sucks." I'm walking away from it before I break a monitor. Um, it seems that that there is a huge cultural clash there. That that if they do not adapt it and it's the same i mean it's the same thing world of warcraft in order to work over there they had to make a bunch of adaptations they're doing it still um with with adapting the uh, raid lockouts to serve the you know How about the theming a whole expansion uh, um, around they really want to play 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 and they can play more and we don't have that here so yeah i, I mean for the game to work here that has to be altered to fit this market and the, you know the opposite is true so guys, I don't know if you've been following Blade and Soul at all, uh, or, or seen anything on it. It looks very Terra-esque, obviously, as stated. It's it's coming from uh, the the Korean side of the Korean grinders. Um, what do you think, with, with, without saying if it will be successful or not? What do you think, based on what we've learned, uh, Blade and Soul will need to adapt in order to be successful over in the Western market? Damn. I just stumped both um, of you. I, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to display my ignorance here and say I have not paid any attention to Blade and Soul at all. It's, I, I mean, it's terrible. It's, 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 it's very kind of yeah. That's basically like I, I was looking at like some some early like screenshots of it and everything, and I was like, uh, eh, it's another one of those. That's basically what happened with me. It's another one of those. So I kind of just stopped paying attention to it. So here's. I don't, I don't really know any of the, the ins and outs of how the game is going to work. Here's where I see Terra and, and especially Blade and Soul catching a little bit of wind is uh, anime fans. It, it, it just kind of screams to, the, to that style of, of combat that we like to see. Um, that's why I think a lot of, personally, I think a lot of anime fans latched onto Terra was the way that the combat kind of worked. Uh, the very action-y, in-your-face, fun, over-the-top kind of combat is, is a good way to, to capture your audience. I think the problem that that we've seen in previous uh, uh, you know adaptations is the execution, uh, and the execution is never uh, strong enough to to convince the masses that it's uh, better. I, I don't want to say better than something like Terra, but it, it is of the status of what Terra is in, in their minds. What? If the if the general question is what does an Asian MMO need to do to have a better reception than Terra did, the answer is don't suck. 
Just flat out call him out. That's pretty much it. Don't suck. That's the problem Terra had. It sucked. That's why it failed. Just make a better game and <laughs> it won't be bad. <laughs> pretty much. I mean, I know it sounds like a dumb thing to say, but there was so much stuff with Terra that was just so... Why would they even do that? What? Oh, I see. Okay, this is blatant. So, oh, okay. Darnell, you're oh, Asian, right? You can Darnell. Yeah, exactly. It's That's bl- yeah. Bl- anime, hey, anime fans. Look at this. Anime, anime fans. Soul, everybody. Anime here fans go. are going to be the ones to play this video game. Am I? Am I mistaken? Was I wrong? Apparently, apparently, we all like panties. <laughs> I mean, I'm not saying I don't. I'm just saying. As long as they're not like, 12 years the old, it won't get censored, right? We just, they just can't look like they're 12, like the Elans. Yeah, I suppose that's probably an actual problem in real life, though. <laughs> <laughs> All right, darn it! This is the damn. This is the game. Really, this is the, yeah. This Why is. would you not want to play that? Am I wrong? I yeah. I mean, you know exactly. I mean, yeah. All right, Darn- Man, I ain't got no words for this stuff. Damn, <laughs> Darnell, you can follow this, him. This is another game with a shiny with action combat, probably terrible, terrible quest line and. Boobies. There we go. It's after dark. I can say boobies. Boobies. Dang. I thought you said buoys, to be completely honest. Like the one in the water behind you, buoy. Darnell Sup. Okay. You can follow him right there at Darnell Sup. Catch him right here on Game Breaker TV where he does a whole bunch of other content relating to video games. His humor is just. I'd, I was about to say unprecedented, but I don't know if it is unprecedented, but it is unique to say the least. And Mr. Did, Josh. Didn't at- everybody. Hold on. Anyways, okay, yeah, no, it's okay. It is unique to say the least. By the way, Darnell, these guys that are on the same website, they're ripping off your show doing Let's Plays. Okay. Klaus and you can talk never about mind, yes, Klaus never mind, yeah. I, I, you lost me. And Mr. Allen, you can follow him right there at Devolor, D E V O L O R E. Uh, as you guys heard, be sure to go check out. I forget the game already, but there, he just released today uh, a just a tip for a new mobile FPS that I, is obviously highly recommended. So be sure to go check yeah. that out, guys. Yeah, I may not have boobies all over on my YouTube channel, but I do have just the tip. Yeah, boy, that's a selling point right there. <laughs> that's a tagline. Yeah. <laughs> you can follow me right here at Mike Shavnitz. Be sure to follow Game Breaker TV at Game Breaker TV and check out the website. We've got a whole bunch of content that comes out. It's MMO related and video game related. Brand new shows coming out all over the place. Like a brand new show, Let's Play with Klaus and Squirrel. Be sure to go check that guy. Uh, check that out, guys. After Dark, every Tuesday at 9 p.m. PDT, the show where we answer your guys' call live every Tuesday night. So if you want to call in, you got to watch live. So be sure to check us out and hit us up on Skype at GB After Dark. Guys, thank you so much for a wonderful week. We'll talk to you guys next week. Boobies.